This morning at around 2 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, while most of California was asleep, Elon Musk was interviewed as a part of a European conference on batteries. During this interview, Elon Musk gave some very specific numbers and details, even more so than we got at Battery Day, about the future cost per kilowatt hour of their batteries, about the production capacity of Gigafactory Berlin, and also some details about the energy density of the battery cells that are going to be found in the Tesla Semi, and some exciting range details for the Tesla Semi. Let's talk about each one of these details and why this is really important for Tesla's future. I'm Jonathan, and welcome to CleanerWatt. The first quote from Elon in this interview that I'd like to cover revolves around Tesla's long-term goals when it comes to the cost per kilowatt hour at the cell level of their batteries. Elon Musk said, quote, the long-term goal would be to try to get to a cost per kilowatt hour of perhaps around 50 to 55 cents at the cell level for a long-range battery cell. Now keep in mind, this interview happened at around 2 a.m. California time, very early in the morning, and it's obvious that Elon Musk meant to say 50 to 55 dollars per kilowatt hour at the cell level and not 50 to 55 cents. Keep that in mind. We'll talk about those numbers in just a minute. But Elon Musk went on to say, in order to get there, there are a lot of innovations that are necessary, both in the cell design and in the design of the factory that produces them. In fact, there is quite a bit more work in building the machine that builds the machine than in the cell itself. Now, one thing that caught my attention about this interview is that Elon Musk gave a very specific number. At battery day, Tesla was very vague about their current cost per kilowatt hour at the cell level and also their future goal. Tesla put up this chart and showed the trajectory of their battery costs from 2012, 2013 on down to around 2025. And they showed that with the new cell format, they could get to a lower cost per kilowatt hour. But as you can see, they didn't put any actual dollar amounts or any specific amounts on this chart. Now that we have a very specific number as Tesla's long-term goal, we can use that 50 to $55 per kilowatt hour cost at the cell level and use that in conjunction with what Tesla revealed at Battery Day. At Battery Day, Tesla put up this slide to summarize how they would reduce the cost per kilowatt hour of their battery cells by 56%. As you can see, four out of these five categories involve improving the cell itself or the manufacturing of the cell. So if we take away the 7% cost reduction that is gained from the structural battery pack from this 56% amount, we're left with 49%. The reason that this is important for our calculations is because Elon Musk specifically made it clear that he was talking about the cost at the cell level. So we need to compare the cost at the cell level and the reductions in the cell design itself and the production, the improving of the factory itself. So if Tesla's long-term goal of 50 to $55 per kilowatt hour represents around a 49% decrease from the current price for the 2170 cells, that means that the current cell cost is somewhere around $102 to $112 per kilowatt hour for the 2170 cell. If this is indeed true, like I believe it is, this confirms what I have thought for a while, that Tesla has reached the $100 per kilowatt hour threshold at the cell level for the 2170 batteries, the batteries found in the Model 3 and the Model Y. This $100 cost per kilowatt hour for batteries has been something that experts have pointed to in the past saying that once battery costs for EVs get to around $100 per kilowatt hour or less, then EVs will begin to be at cost parity with internal combustion engine vehicles. And while this $100 cost per kilowatt hour number is important, Tesla has much bigger goals in the future, of course, this $50 to $55 cost. The question now is, did Tesla reveal how quickly they could get to this $50 to $55 cost per kilowatt hour? Well, in Tesla's presentation, a lot of their goals revolved around 2030. For instance, this chart from Battery Day talked about their goal of reaching 100 gigawatt hours of battery production per year in 2022 and 3 terawatt hours of battery production per year by 2030. So is Tesla hoping to reach the $50 to $55 cost per kilowatt hour at the cell level by 2030 or earlier? I believe they actually want to reach this by around 2025 and this is their internal goal. Here's that chart that we talked about earlier, but I've added some numbers for context. 
This chart that Tesla put out has 11 different rows and the first row represents zero. So I've added the other numbers there representing one through 10 for each one of those rows. If Tesla is right there in the middle around 2021 at around $100 per kilowatt hour, that means in 2013, 2012, 2013, they were over $200 per kilowatt hour. And if you look at their planned trajectory for 2025, it sure appears like that $50 per kilowatt hour target is targeted for around that 2025 year. This would be very significant because this cost at $50 to $55 per kilowatt hour by 2025, I believe would be earlier than any expert believed was possible. This would make EVs much cheaper than internal combustion engine vehicles and internal combustion engine vehicles would no longer be cost competitive with EVs. This combined with the already lower cost of ownership for an EV would make an EV the no-brainer choice even more so than it is today. Moving on to another part of the interview, Elon Musk was asked about the battery production goals for Gigafactory Berlin. And Elon Musk revealed that he thought that it would be capable of over 100 gigawatt hours per year of production and possibly over time going to around 200 to 250 gigawatt hours per year. He said that he believes the Gigafactory Berlin battery factory will be the largest in the world. To put this in perspective, 100 gigawatt hours of battery capacity for this battery factory at Gigafactory Berlin is enough to build around 1.3 million Model Ys and Model 3s with a long range pack. That would represent more than 2.6 times more vehicles just produced from this Gigafactory in Berlin than Tesla is producing in all of 2020. Elon Musk also revealed some details about the future range of the Tesla Semi being even greater than they talked about before. Electrek reported this fact with the headline, Tesla Semi Electric Truck to have up to 621 miles of range, says Elon Musk. Here's the exact quote from Elon Musk. Getting a range of let's say 500 kilometers, which equals 310 miles, is I think quite easy trivial to be frank for a semi truck, and this is assuming a truck that is pulling a load of 40 metric tons. If you want, for long range trucking, you can take the range up to, we think, easily 800 kilometers, which is around 497 miles, and we see a path over time to 1,000 kilometers, which is around 621 mile range for a heavy duty truck. So currently, if you go to the Tesla Semi page, you see that Tesla lists a 300 and 500 mile range Tesla Semi, but Elon Musk revealed the details that they're working towards a 1,000 kilometer or well over 600 mile range Semi. He also mentioned that this is assuming a fully loaded truck at 80,000 pounds in combination of the truck, the trailer, and the load itself. This is a fully loaded truck getting these kind of ranges. And he revealed that the Tesla Semi is not going to really be much heavier than a traditional diesel Semi. Elon said, quote, You are able to carry basically the same cargo as a diesel truck. We think that maybe there's a one ton penalty, maybe. At this point, we think that we can have less than one ton cargo reduction, and we think long term it's going to be zero cargo reduction for electric trucks. In this past video about battery day in the Tesla Semi, I talked about how with Tesla's 2170 battery packs, there would be somewhat of a penalty for an electric truck. It would not be able to have as high of a max payload as a diesel truck. And I talked about how with the Maxwell technology and the new battery cells, Tesla would be able to reach a max payload somewhat close to a traditional diesel semi. And it happens that my calculations were pretty accurate compared to what Elon Musk said. These are of course really important details for the viability of the Tesla Semi because if the Tesla Semi has a huge weight penalty for being electric, it's not going to be as viable when it comes to hauling a lot of cargo. There's going to be a loss in the amount of cargo that you can haul and this ends up costing the end user or the person shipping the cargo. One last detail that Elon Musk gave in this interview that I thought was really significant was the fact that he talked about in order to reach an 800 kilometer range for the Tesla Semi, the battery watt hours per kilogram or the energy density of the batteries would need to be around 300 watt hours per kilogram. So if Tesla is already able to build a semi with a 500 mile range as it says on their website and they're actually testing these semis, 
That would mean that the energy density of Tesla's 4680 battery cells, the cells found in the Tesla Semi, would be at around 300 watt hours per kilogram. This would be an increase over the current 2170 cells of a quite substantial amount. In 2019, Clean Technica did an article about the late Jack Rickard's teardown of the Model 3 battery pack and battery cell. With this teardown, Jack Rickard determined that the energy density at the cell level of the 2170 batteries was about 247 watt hours per kilogram. If these 4680 battery cells indeed have an energy density of around 300 watt hours per kilogram, this would represent a 21% increase over the 2170 cells tested by Jack Rickard. I believe this is completely possible because Tesla at Battery Day talked about adding more silicon to the anode and based on the research that I've done, this greatly increases the energy density of the batteries and also the charging speeds as well. As every day passes and as we learn more about Tesla's battery tech and Tesla's future, it becomes more obvious that they're going to maintain their lead for years to come. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and that you learned something as well. If you're not already subscribed to this channel, please consider subscribing. And if you do subscribe, if you click the bell icon, you'll be notified when new videos are published. Also, if you did like the video, please consider clicking the like button because that helps other people find the video as well. I'd also like to take a moment here at the end of the video to thank the Patreon supporters who support me every month and help me make this content and publish it here for you to watch. A special thank you to my performance supporters, Bradford Ferguson of Halter, Ferguson Financial, Inku Kang, and Laura Sanborn, and also the other supporters listed on the screen. Thank you so much.